Nothing. Okay. Well, speaking of wieners, penises, here's your titty monster. Brooke has brought the first guest to ever bring me a gift. Thank you so much. Wow. May I read what's on here? Or yeah. No? That, yeah. Of course. Uh, so, what was the what was the inspiration behind this specific? Here, you collab? move the door knocker because there's that oh, comes there's a, with it. There's a door knock. Oh, okay. All right. It helps so door knocker from keep a breast. So from keep a breast. Basically, that's a door knocker that just. And tells you how to check yourself okay. once a month for gotcha. lumps and stuff. But right. keep a breast, uh, $20 to every beanie that gets sold through Titty Monster. This is my pink beanie, but Titty Monster has a mastectomy scar. And yeah, $20 for every beanie sold is going to keep a breast. So Hell this yeah. is my third year of doing it. Hell yeah. And I have to plug it. So you I must. thought, why not do it here? I don't wear a beanie, so this, I is, know. this is a big day for me. And it's pink. You look good, though. October. Yep. October breast cancer is awareness. Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Everything's pink. Everything's pink. I remember when I, when I played football, I would be like, yes, we can put pink tape on our stuff now. <laughs> anyway, welcome Thanks, back Brad. to the Joe Rogan podcast. I'm Real kidding. men wear pink, bro. Facts. See this shit? Got a very special guest. Got the one and only Brooke. How do you say your last name? Comagees. Comagees. I could gun to my head, would say known. Brooke's last name, pull the trigger. How you doing, Brooke? Uh, come guys, yeah, it's always come guys. I come mean, I was brutal in high school, like my whole life. What? What? Like, it's anglicized Dutch. So you're Dutch. Yeah. So it was Coleman Geisen, and then uh, when you know they moved here, they changed it to sound more anglicized. Ellis Island. They're like, yeah, we can't have the motherfuckers rock. I don't even know. It was, I don't think it was all that. But <laughs> yeah, it was just like they changed. They just changed it to sound. But I think Coleman Geisen is not as sounds easier to like dissect than my last name people are like okay i think it's because it's the it's just those last couple of letters it's like oh the you G-Y-S. got me yeah it's just like people oh. are like are you hungarian i'm like i'm so white what are you like, so pale, do i bro. look hungarian so caucasian how yeah. does this look looks good you look good yeah um couldn't tell you i don't know i'm definitely like irish italian mickey meatball like yeah <laughs> yeah but with a pink hat the on. trick to remember my last name is it rhymes with comedies. 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 What is it? Comedies. Comedies. There's a bar in Delaware called Comedies Pub. My mom found it on Facebook. Uh-huh. And like we went and there's a lot of comedies in the Delaware area. But yeah, we went to this pub. Are you related to them? Distant, yeah. Oh, wow. But okay. like this pub is covered with cameras and you see like pictures of like prints on the wall and like Muhammad Ali and like they're beautiful, like black and white 35 millimeter prints. And Uh I'm like, what the hell? And I'm like a photo nerd at this point. And my cousin, Fred Comages was like a huge photographer in the Delaware area who like went to the camp to fight, uh, watch Muhammad Ali fight and like would go shoot like concerts and stuff. And like, so yeah, it, it, it was just cameras hanging from the ceiling and it was really cool because it was like, whoa, like this connection here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he like was up for the, I don't know if he was like nominated for the Pulitzer, but there was like some inkling that was like his work was almost nominated or oh, something. Sick. But yeah, he was a cool guy. I got Hell to meet yeah. him. Hell yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's like it's in my weird, blood. <laughs> subtle thing like that or it's just like small world kind of like you knew Gigi. Yeah, like, that was so weird. Yeah. yeah. But that Gigi's was, that memorable. Like, I've had people that know me that have also been like, wait, I know who your cousin is. Because 10 years ago, she <laughs> I helped her bring groceries inside. And I remembered it. It's like, how, people just remember her. I, like, really was, like, when I left, I was like, why didn't you just get her number? Like, just so, like, because, like, I was just, I was, like. So you can have a she friend. She was so sweet. Yeah, I needed friends. I was, I needed someone to, like, smoke a bong with. I don't know if Joe, uh, but I don't know if Gigi's <laughs> ever smoked weed, but, like. Let's get her up here. Let's get her up here. <laughs> Let's get, get her, out get that. Her. Can we get that bong out? But everything's good, Brooke. Anything new? What's what's um, going on? How's what's your week? Going? It's Friday. It's Friday. I'm. I've been luckily very busy. Oh yeah. From I don't know if you guys got really affected, but like last year, with like the strikes and stuff, like there was just nothing up here, and I was in between. You know, one settling up here from the city and like getting out of a relationship and like kind of starting over up here, and like there's also no freelance work. So yeah. I was like, fuck, I'm 30 years old. Like, what the hell? So like, honestly, within the last, I just turned 32 last week. Happy um, birthday. Yeah, thank you. And things are good. I'm like doing what I like to do. I'm shooting, mm-hmm. I'm editing, 
doing this shit, you know. And rocking a pink hat. And rocking. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. I need to push beanies. I need to push beans. It's that time of year. Everybody needs a beanie. I always will buy a beanie for something. Like, oh, because now I work outside or like I snowboard. I always lose them. Kara got me a Supreme beanie and I can't find it. And she like wanted to kill me because. She's so nice. I know. Where is baby girl? I know. I love her. I got to get her a beanie so she could lose it. Maybe one of these. Yeah, Avi. You're not going to wear it. Does it look good? Don't lie. Do I look like a penis? No, it looks... I look like a penis. No, it actually looks really good on you. Beanies look good on you. It looks super fuchsia. Fuchsia? It looks fuchsia in these lights. Oh, okay. Spence, be honest. You look great. He's fucking lying out of his ass, though. I can see the Supreme! <laughs> Yo, that could be... That, that might be in the cards there. Now that you have uh, defeated Monster Energy... The imagine, sky's the limit. Imagine I did a collab. I, that would be so funny if I ever did a collab. Talk about that. So you had, what was it, a trademark war? Okay. This is what it was. Okay. So the cartoon, I mean, she's this one here is obviously for breast cancer, but the normal one, she has both her titties. Mm -hmm. And the cartoon itself was registered, no problem. I wanted the trademark for it. But... Two, three years ago, I was like, well, I need to be smart and get the name. Yeah. So I registered Titty Monster. And what happened was you could be anywhere in the United States and you could be any type of business. Like you could have had this, this podcast be Dying Monster Films. And if you wanted to register it, you might get a letter of opposition, which is what I received. Mm -hmm. And I was one of 30 companies that month that monster energies lawyers just send out and a letter of opposition essentially is like we're blocking you from this from continuing because of brand confusion which is like crazy because it's like well you don't own the word monster but yeah. they are also a corporation with a lot of money yeah so you know what's the next step for that uh people try and fight it but they will just bury you bury you bury you you know uh, under paperwork and legal debt. Yeah. It, like, I literally had to spend... The, what they do is you can answer to the letter of opposition, but you only have 30 days. And so I had only a month to find a lawyer, basically, to answer the letter of opposition, and it cost me 900 bucks just to, say, just to say, have a lawyer say, no, we're reject. Like, we're going to go forward with this until I was able to find pro bono lawyers uh -huh. to represent me but so like I, I'd get, I had bought myself some time I like moved up back to my parents house and like paying fucking $900 for the, I'm like what the fuck am I doing um, and I, I have a friend named Jessie who's mom she's you know retired but she's a lawyer she's big big titty monster uh, fan wears her crew neck and shit she let me call her and I was like what do I do like I can't afford a, I can't afford a lawyer. Mm. So she was like, all right, let's talk about it. Like, and I think she's the one that found this article about this guy who got some student lawyers. They weren't lawyers, but they were in the law program at this university. I'm, I forget the university. Um, but this guy had like these huge fish tanks in his basement. Um, the actual fit, like he was aquarium? a big, yeah. Okay. Like he was a, it, Something he was one of like these a... people that collects huge fish. They're called monster fish. Okay. And he had this um, like website called monsterfishkeepers.com where other weirdos like him, like this niche, like cool, like hobby, like he, there's this forum. So he wanted to trademark it and he got hit with a letter of, of opposition. And these student lawyers fought. They literally worked their asses off that these student lawyers, they, they beat them. Wow. Hey, They did their homework. They, yeah. Yeah. Have you seen yeah. Legally Blonde? No. Well, yeah, like it's hard. That's pretty much the plot of Legally Blonde, right? She's like a, <laughs> right? Like she's get, a like, law she, student, yeah. and she ends up like kind of winning the case for her defense. I don't know. Sorry, I've seen it, but anyway, continue. Yeah, you've seen it a couple times. I like know every word. It's yeah, it's yeah, it's kind of like I guess legally blonde where it's but it's it's here's the thing so we had that precedent with monster fish keepers but i then needed to still find 
a lawyer to do yeah, you know yeah. the work. So Jesse's mom, uh, Hetty, was like, "There's this thing in the city called the Volunteer Lawyers for Artists of New York, mm-hmm. and for an eighty-five dollar membership for the year, you get access to like any type of issue that you're having." they will pair you up with a lawyer that's willing to provide pro bono services. Uh So I had them help me three times, got fucked over by some clients, got my money back and some titty monster shit. These people were trying to keep not paying me (laughs) and all this titty monster shit. They handled it. I got a contract made after that. I was like, well, can you guys help me? Like, and they were like, yeah, another lawyer. We, you know, he typed up. If you guys need that, I have that for you. You know, I send it to people all the time. I'm like, you should have this. Like, don't ever go through what I went through. And then they hooked me up with Prior Cashman, and Prior Cashman took it so seriously. Like, they they literally repped Titty Monster. Like, it was so crazy how serious they took it. They are so badass and and shit. And, Uh like, there's a meme of, like, Big Bird sitting at a conference table. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. yeah. They asked me, like, after our first Zoom, it was, like, really intense. They're, They're just so, like, amazing. I'm like, fuck, they're so smart. They're so cool. They're taking this shit so seriously. And they're like, why aren't you, like? you need to take this, like, this is amazing. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. And they're like, how do you feel? I'm like, do you know the meme of Big Bird sitting at a conference table? That's how I feel. It was just like kind of imposter syndrome a little bit. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Like, but I mean, it's, I'm really, I'm proud of it. Like, it is like, yeah, fuck, fuck monster. Like, I want to register fuck monster and then get get it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like they don't, like you said, they don't own I would just go through the monster. same thing again. They also don't wor- own the word energy. So like. Well, there's monster.com, which is like the job site. The job site thing. But um, that's, it's very courageous to you because like most people are like, oh, all right, well, let's just change the name. But obviously the name Titty Monster has like a great meaning to you. It's, it's more mm-hmm. than just like a brand or, or an identity. There's, there's backstory there. Would you right. care to share? Of course. What and why? So it was, it was a nickname that like. I, I mean, I just feel like when you're a kid and like overnight, suddenly like someone has a boyfriend and a girlfriend and like your bodies are changing. And it's like, I was still somebody that was like, wait, I want to still be a kid. Like, but things were changing so fast. And like, I already knew I was different when it came to like being gay, but that was obviously something that I was going to push down. But something I couldn't hide was my body changing. And like all these girls suddenly are like, you're so lucky. You're so lucky. Like you have, you have tits. You're so lucky. And I'm like, stop like objectifying me. Mm. Like, you know, it was just like, I was so uncomfortable. And so like this nickname was supposed to be playful. It wasn't like, it was, you know, other girls that I was close to, but it was, it did sting a little bit because it was like, not only was I uncomfortable on the outside, I was super uncomfortable on the inside, like all the time like Mm -hmm. I really don't feel like I felt like even myself like truly when I did come out and stuff but like I really feel like it takes you to be like 30 to like really like feel like okay I feel like I know myself (laughs) truly I've heard that from a lot of like people that are older than me it's like just get to 30 you'll be all right or like you'll figure something out and uh well we'll see for me at least but um so they called you titty monster yeah like playfully you started to embrace it but it was still like a it's kind of, so it's like a name birth of irony almost of like this yeah. was meant to be this thing. But now I'm going to take control of this word. Totally. Gotcha. Absolutely. Yeah. So, it was like reclaiming the nickname where it's like, all right, I'm out. I'm sober. Like I'm no longer like going to, you know, numb myself with alcohol. And like mm-hmm. I'm going to really like deal and like embrace what I got, you know. And like a lot of people are like before like I would really tell people the story behind it people are like oh cool boob cartoon and I'm like yeah it is a boob cartoon but you know it also is this <laughs> it's like yeah like it, it, I I really love like how everyone really embraces it but sometimes it is like you know I'll get like the Instagram follows and it's like some like midwestern white guy that's like tits like tits oh, yeah boobies I just like how about boobies yeah where the boobies at <laughs> I'm here to see some tits I'm here yep Titty Moss is where? <laughs> well, yeah, I guess everybody likes boobs, I think, objectively. We all got them. Everybody's got them. Man boobs, women boobs, any other identifying. Well, men get breast cancer. Yes. That's why you got to check yourself. But, like, what's so funny is, like, as insecure as I was as a female, like, obviously, like, my guy pa- counterparts in that age group, like, 
not only must be kind of feeling very similarly, mm. but like I feel like it's different because traditionally men are told to like kind of like not talk about it, be tough and stuff like that and like not have like proper outlets mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like I don't I'm not saying like women don't, but I just feel like yeah, like that's an insecurity that you were probably like, you know, really thought about as a kid. Like it's yeah. so funny like what like now like I'm like I beat myself up as a kid about stupid yeah. shit. Yeah. It's it's cuz we're like uh I think it just goes back to like kids are evil and mean. So like <laughs> when you're young and you're just surrounded by like kids like think in absolutes and then middle school happens and then most of the kids like move on from thinking like that, but it still does Everybody I know has at least been like, yeah, this person said something to me in elementary school and it, it stayed with me forever. I guarantee you that person said that probably doesn't remember because oh, yeah. that kids are just like, you're fat, you're ugly, you're stupid. And then you're like, oh, damn, I I'm could fat, never ugly, be a teacher. And stupid. Oh, I couldn't. I would. My sister's a teacher and I'm just like, how? How do you do it? Kids are so fucking mean. I don't even know how I'd be as a parent. I'm an uncle. And my <laughs> my nephew's a baby, so I don't got nothing to worry about. Same. But like, I'm a I'm a new aunt. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the aunt uncle 2024. But it's baby. You're kind of like hi. Yeah. It's like I'm related <laughs> to you, but I have no obligation to take care of you. It's terrific. Um, where is I going with that? But you no, know, yeah. Like kids thinking absolutes, and and we also internalize that for ourselves at like a young age, and and it sticks with us throughout. Like. For me, and I'm sure you can agree, it's like my thing was always the weight, and that made me like have such a perspective, uh, perceptive about myself, perception about myself. And then one day I was like, "Wait, that happened how long ago? I gotta just get over it." I like literally like in seventh grade, like was worrying about being fat, like, yeah. and I was like not eating enough, and I was like getting dizzy, and like uh, how. How fucking stupid. I like wish I could go back and be like, bitch, go eat some mozzarella sticks. Eat as many Go eat those pizza sticks. dippers, bro. Yeah, what the fuck? Where did you go to school? Where are you from originally? Westchester. Which, oh, it's so funny. So my grandparents met at NFA in the 50s. My dad's parents. Wow. Okay. Right. So, and you know, he's from the area. I'm from Westchester though. But best decision my parents made was getting us out of there. Gotcha. Yeah. I've I heard, love it up I've here. I've heard nothing but terrible things about Westchester County. It's a bubble. It's just a, it's a very upper middle class bubble that I definitely feel like, uh, thank God I'm not in it anymore. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm a more worldly person for it. But oh, yeah. So when did Titty Monster become, so did you design the original? Yes. Cart so was that something you were always like doodling and workshopping on? Did you know it was going to become <laughs> a brand? Like what was the, so the roadmap? So it was actually, I, what birthday was it? Six years ago. What's six minus 32? 24. No. No. 26. 26th birthday. I, I worked that day. I was working for these two dudes at like doing photo and like, it was a really long day. I remember. And it was, I had never really had people like throw me like a birthday party before. It was like really cool, but I was like newly sober for the first time. And like, Things were going my way. I was like out. I was like making money. And my roommates threw me like a little birthday party. I like come home and like my friends were waiting there for me. And it was like, wow, this is amazing. And we had such a cool apartment in Brooklyn. I lived with like a sound engineer and like video game nerds. It would be like living with you two and like having the best movie couch set up in the basement, yeah. like surround sound, huge TV, record player. Nothing in the fridge, but everything in the living room. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the best couches like oh my god so we're in the basement we had like a backyard and we were like barbecuing and then we ended up in the basement we were playing quiplash have you ever played oh, quiplash? of course yeah. yeah so we were playing quiplash and you draw your av avatar and i drew titty monster just like then and there with my tip of my finger like i cannot draw titty monster like i suck at it i've been trying to practice really? yeah i'm not good at it so i can't okay. do it i like drew her on my iphone so that was my avatar for quiplash with my roommates and my friends but we couldn't stop fucking laughing at my avatar like no matter what the we were playing we were like you're fucking and obviously that i took a picture of the screen i remember and i was like i need to remember this so <laughs> i knew that titty monster was like in the back of my head but i didn't really associate it with the drawing yet but my mom my mom is such a fucking like she sees like a cool like gadget or toy and she like has to buy it and she bought a cricket the the vinyl cutter 
you can oh like, cricket machine the okay. cricket yeah, like yeah. yeah you can buy them at like michael's and stuff you mm-hmm. like and so Make she stickers like stickers and stuff yeah yeah but you can buy the heat press vinyl and um so she bought one but it's always she buys one and then she's like are you figuring out i'm not like i'm not <laughs> I'm like you do it and i'm like okay so i was like well what am i gonna make and i was like well i have this little drawing so i bought some heat press vinyl and i started i just went to michael's i bought like whatever they had i had like a white crew neck and like a black crew neck and like a t-shirt here and i went in my basement and i fucked around they were the first few were horrible i didn't know mm-hmm. not know what the fuck i was doing i definitely mailed some to some people that they were like what the fuck they were like really Psychopath. bad what the fuck is yeah because like still didn't have a name for her but i eventually got better at that and then the pocket crew uh, like the pocket t-shirt came to mind where you like it's kind of like the yeah, yeah, where you where can you like flash like people and there's titties i was like well i can do that like let's see if michaels has that and i was it was always just like something to do. Like I always like like to be creative in that way that it was like a really fun project that I was like, okay, I can go get stoned in my basement and like heat press some shit. No, I'll post on Instagram. Oh, somebody wants to really actually buy this. Okay. Like what's your address? And so I was making money. Like I was like, okay, like let's go. I just, I remember like at the skate park, I'd be like, titty, I'm seeing this <laughs> titty monster thing everywhere. And I'm like, who's is like, who, who is, I thought it was like monster. one of the, I was like, it has to be somebody I know because it's like all over the skate park. People have the grip tape, the beanie, the stickers. And then like, I just remember I'm like, I wonder who's like making this shit. And then out of the corner of my eye, I see a heavily uh, padded helmet, <laughs> wrist guards, elbow pads, knee pads, <laughs> and like a five panel hat. And then a titty monster shirt. And I go, I bet you it's probably that person right there. And sure enough, it was. Doing my tray flip. Doing your tray flip. Mm-hmm. I think I maybe, no joke, seen you on top of your skateboard once my whole life i mean i i just i guess i look away and you land tricks i come back and you're just like you know why i started going to the skate park no i did actually i was skating in brooklyn but it was all flat ground and i just like wanted to ride around and i was like oh my god i'm like of the age where like i can do this shit i'm gonna buy a skateboard fuck it so i would just zoom around in Brooklyn. And so when I came up here, I like never skated at a skate park. And again, like I don't have rubber bones like you guys. Like I didn't start skating. Like yeah. I'm not good. Like, but I went to the skate park because I was like, well, I'll fucking live up here now. Like, where am I going to buy weed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, so I went there and first. You'll find it. You will find weed at the skate park. Yeah. I made friends. Are we have any new, you have any new things? And I know other than pushing these beanies out, definitely go buy one. But like any new projects associated with Titty Monster after your well fought legal battle? Well, I have ideas, but I also have, here's the thing, like, Mm -hmm. I can't, I don't want to agitate, like, monster or anything, like, that is, like, I'm really lucky what happened, and, Mm -hmm. like, I'm not going to push it, because I did post on Instagram, like, a shirt that said, like, I fought monster energy, and all I got was this trademark, and, like, people are, like, where can I get that, and I'm, like, I have to ask my lawyers, like, I, because, like, there have been instances where, like, I might want to put, like, the letter of opposition on a shirt, I would take my address out of it and stuff like that. Yeah, you like could like psychos. black out like yeah. certain and oh, just black put out titty would be monster so sick. over all the like black bars. Yeah, or just like titty monster at like one titty drive. Yeah. <laughs> Tittyville. <laughs> Boop, Illinois. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> there you go. Um, but there was my friend Peter had this idea he, when the legal battle was happening and I was telling him about it. We were on the phone. He was like, you should do a shirt that says unleash the breast, like unleash the breast, but uh-huh. put R in parentheses because they have trademarked unleash the beast. They don't really use it as much like early 2000. I feel like when we were in high school, I saw. It was everywhere. Uh, yeah. Unleash the beast. They have so many things that like they've trademarked that you're like, oh yeah, that like the Java monster. Like have you ever had a Java monster? Nah. It's I've like the never coffee energy drank Me monster. Me neither. I, I don't like energy drinks really, but. Nah. Um, I don't want almost heart attacks. <laughs> If I have to, I drink, like, an orange Red Bull, but that's because, like, my waitressing days, like, in the city, like, I basically worked at, like, a club restaurant, so you, like, had to keep the vibes up. But, hey, you guys partying tonight? But I'm, like, then I come home, and, like, I, I'm, it's, like, 3 a.m., and drop. I'm, like, yeah. I, I can't stop <laughs> dancing. It's like that Keen Peel sketch where they're just, like, stuck forever in the <laughs> LMFAO music video. Yeah, I've never, I, I used to drink, like, the Celsius. They're, they're just so bad like for you. They're so bad. They give me a headache, but um, the best energy drink go to bed on time. I drink coffee or that, like, and I'll I don't drink, drink shitty coffee. Co- like I'm addicted to 
coffee. Yeah. Um, yeah, you see, I should plug Stewart. Yeah. Um, <laughs> basically, I asked my lawyers, I was like, hey, I have this idea, like, unleash the breast. And she, they were like, no. They Don't were like, it. be smart. Like, they, that's like literally poking a bear. Because yeah. now you're antagonizing them and yeah. like, they have reason to like spend all their money to make your life miserable. And I'm like, noted. Like, I'm not going to do what that. What about... So if I don't you, want that to happen. What if you take, like... Are you familiar with Stone Cold Steve Austin? He would smash the beer cans and drink Oh, them. yeah. Why would you just do two, like, <laughs> energy drinks just going down the... T- like, wet That's some Kenny contest. Powers shit. Oh, my God. I need you on t- Team Titty. Yo, put me on... The marketing. creative brand marketing, bro. Kara's our model. Actually, uh, working on Where's a... Where's Kara at? Huh? <laughs> Kara. Where's Kara at? Yeah. She's... Spokesperson. As of right now... My bed. <laughs> you wish. Uh, I She's do. at work. Selling no. bridal dresses. She makes me laugh so... Like, I just want what you... Like, the fact You want that, to own my girlfriend. No, I want it. what you have. Like, you guys just fuck with each other. Like, you guys are each other's best friends. Like, you, like, body slammed her in, like, a blow-up castle. Sure did. You... She did this really weird thing where she, like, did, like, a, a Broadway dance and then hit a golf ball and it was, like, the worst hit ever. And she went... And it was like, this bitch is so funny. Yeah. She is the best. You should she see is. what I do to her off camera. I obviously have seen... Uh, what is it? The Furby. Furby sketch and all the other ones on Vimeo. So let's talk about your uh, comedy sketch career here. So it's been on pause. It's been on pause. I would love to see a return, bro, because you are very funny. You do have you do have some skill. The Furby one was very interesting for sure. And I remember you <laughs> gave me the backstory as to that. But like, so when you moved to the city, was it to pursue acting? Was it pursue photography? What? Okay, so. I went to school of visual arts. Uh, for where at? In New York City. What school? School of visual arts. Oh, that's what it's called. It's called SVA. Oh, okay, I know. I know, I know. Everyone's like, "Is that a two-year school? Is NYU?" It's on a it? nine-year like, school, bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's so funny. Like, how? Like, how do you teach kids film? You just like show movies, and it's like that's good. Figure that out. Go do that. Yeah. And you're like, is it good? I don't. My brain isn't developed enough yet. Why? Is like, it good? Yeah. I don't even know who I am. <laughs> But yeah, uh, SVA for screenwriting. But like, I always like naturally was good at photography and high yeah. school and stuff. And everyone always kind of was like, why aren't you going for photo? I just always really loved movies. Like my first job, like not even before my first job, like my mom was a bookkeeper at a theater not far in Peekskill called the Paramount. Oh, and they would okay. have live acts. But on the weekend, there was this really rad guy named Ron who would show movies and they would be like obscure independent film and he would sell like two tickets but I my mom would drive me up I would sell the tickets and I would get popcorn candy and a soda and 20 bucks I felt like a fucking millionaire Damn. and I'd get to watch the movie and how, in this old, how old were you? Theater. started working at 12 nice <laughs> I had a job at 12 it's the right thing my to do my mom like, was like what do you want to do on a Friday night you're not doing anything you want to make 20 bucks and go watch a movie and I would watch these like amazing movies and so then when I actually legally could work, my first job was an independent movie theater in Westchester called the Jacob Burns, which really, it was, it's, to this day, it's amazing. It's like, still there. It's still yeah, it's, okay. it's thriving. Like, it really is, like, we should field trip one day. It's oh, I'm It's really, down. it's great, and, like, it's only gotten better. We need to find new movie theaters because fucking Showtime. Yeah, we talked about it on a, I saw a that. previous episode about Showtime. It's, as long as they don't knock it down, because then we'll buy it one day. <laughs> I mean, no, we they're should gonna sneak in there. What? It was, just steal us some see. Just the nostalgia. Steal some reels. So you. So is the it was movies that. So you wanted then pursue filmmaking yeah, I just, or yeah, acting? I was filmmaking and also yeah. I mean, I th- secretly I feel like I always liked doing like the plays and stuff in high school, and I was like, yeah, I like I want to, but I'm like, I don't know. I just I can't sing or anything. Like it's, I'm not I'm no Kara. I'm not like Broadway. I wasn't Broadway like yeah. that. But I just yeah. I just it really did interest me. And you didn't have to declare, like, your concentration at SVA. You just picked, like, film, video, or photography. And then your second year, you picked what you wanted to focus on. And I kind of wish, I mean, honestly, I would not go back to film school. I would just get on set if I ever wanted to redo it. But, yeah, yeah, like, I feel like I learned more about how not to be a like how not to be I was just like really like I was thrown into the city at like basically 18 and I was like drinking a lot and just like Mm -hmm. coping and like not taking care of myself and like 
being fucked up, like just. So you had moved there to pursue college, but yeah, the, the substances had gotten in the way. Well, yeah, and I like it. Just it was the. Co- I feel like when you move to the city, you like really like learn about like the city and like art schools. Kind of like you make what you make of it. Like art schools, like if you want to do it, you'll do it. And I feel like for screenwriting, for me, I'm not really a word person. <laughs> I'm more a visual person. That's why photography always came naturally to me. And even so funny, my senior year, I took a freshman photo class and it was kind of a big stink like but I'm like made it happen so I was like a senior in this freshman darkroom class and I was just like I love that and I would always be even on my lunch break I had an internship at SNL that year and in between like class and my internship I would go to the darkroom and develop that was just my my safe haven currently learning how to develop I've been studying and watching so relaxing I was just saying to someone today I was like Digital scared the shit out of me. Like in high school, I took a darkroom class. They don't teach that anymore. No. It was so relaxing to me. But like film takes it to that step where it's so like you need it's so mechanical that it's like broke. It's so broken down that like once you learn that it actually made digital like not scary for me. And yeah. I was explaining that to somebody that like you get a digital camera and like all the settings you're like, oh, uh, what the fuck? but like then once with like film, like the ISO of your role, like, OK put that in the camera okay make sure then like you have the light meter like making you know getting good at that like I wouldn't be where I'm at like and I I just love the process of it it's just it's just so fascinating like what saved me was when I I went to college it was really rough wasn't out of the closet or anything and I was like really like kind of figuring my shit out but I had moved to Brooklyn and I there was a community dark room there called the Bushwick community dark room that like I have friends from to this day from there that are like some of the most amazing photographers, but it was a big fucking warehouse. There was like a skate park in the back oh, and like they, it was, it was great. Like the parties there were like, it was huge tires. Like you could go in at any hour you wanted. Someone would be just like smoking a joint and drinking a beer, like waiting for their film to dry. And, it was just, it was madness, but it was amazing. And, like, I really miss that. Like, I wish we could do that here. It would be so we cool. We can. We can. One day. So you interned at SNL, though. Yeah, but it, it, it's... Wasn't that great of an experience? No, I, I will always be so grateful for it. Uh-huh. But what's so funny about it is, like, <laughs> you know the term never meet your heroes? It's like... Yeah, you had mentioned that before. Yeah. It's like how do I explain it? I will be forever grateful. And I just feel like it, it, when you, when you get something like that and it's like a dream for anyone, like writer, actor, literally intern. What was your intern focus? Writer's research. And you want to know how much fucking writer's research I did? I got so much coffee from Starbucks and fucking Hale and Hardy. And I would get so, I was so broke that like Colin Jones would be like, Hey, can you go get me some chicken orzo soup? And I'd be like, sure. I'd go downstairs, come back up. I would get my stamp card stamped and you would, I'd get 12, come up. Someone else would be like, Hey, can you go get me soup? I'd get another stamp. I would eat. Like I would just eat for free by like getting stamps of like other people's like shit. Yeah. It was, it was like, what's the analogy I want to make? It's everyone's like nerd weirdos dream to work there. Like it is like church to some people, including myself. And suddenly you're like thrown into this like schedule that's not me, but like the writers and everybody are like literally you don't sleep. Like it's one after the other and you party. The parties are till 8 a.m. Like uh, it was like and these it's like finally the kids that like weren't cool in high school are suddenly fucking cool. Yeah. And like the only way the only like reference and frame in, of mind they have is like the people that kind of treated them like shit in high school. So like they kind of like become dicks like to the interns and stuff where it's like, well, you're f- like, like they can treat us like, like, who are you? Like, I'm fucking, I'm the shit. Like, look who I am. But then you meet the other people that like learn your fucking name. Like Bobby Moynihan will forever be a fucking angel baby. Like learn your God. name. Thank God. I mean, like, like, it, uh, I, I couldn't imagine he would be uh, n- anything but a nice person, Bobby. Great, Moran. like grateful, like just like says thank you and you get called. Like, yeah, uh, he knows, like he knew, like yeah, you're getting us coffee, like but you know if things were lulling, like the couches were right outside his office, literally couches. We just sat there. I would just sit there on my fucking laptop. He would just like pop out and be like, 
going on, guys? <laughs> it yeah. was just like chill. Like, but yeah, it was a weird time. I mean, I definitely. So how did you end up doing? Because you did what was it, upright. Okay, so yeah, yeah. I and it, yeah, so Bobby's uh, UCB too, and I was just like, I really gravitated towards like like people like him where I'm like, well, how did you like learn this? Like, and he, he came up through UCB and I was like, all right, well, what's next step? Like, um, I had moved home and we were in Beacon, mm -hmm. my family, and I signed up for UCB classes and would take the train down. And I really, I feel like now because I'm comfortable and like sober and everything, I was drink. I had such bad performance anxiety. Mm -hmm. I had like a bathtub talk show at one point or I would interview comedians I'd met at UCB and they've gone on to do great things, but we would drink beer in, in a bathtub. And it was like me trying to be like, I'm so fucking cool. And really it's like, I have such bad anxiety. Like, I like need to like drink Like naked this. in a bathtub? Like I had a bathing suit Oh, on. okay. Still, that's like. I would like rant yeah. and stupid shit. It was stupid. It was really, it's really cringe and I like whatever, but like. I never was good to be like on a team at UCB, but the best thing was like, I got an internship <laughs> Friday nights when the old theater was still in Chelsea. It was the most disgusting fucking theater. We would clean these toilets for free classes. And it was a 6 oh. p.m. to 3 a.m. shift. But I saw some of the best fucking comedy and improv, like pissing my pants, dude. Like I saw some people that have gone on to like, I'll be watching TV and I'll be like, Mom, that person, they, they're used to be. She's like, really? I'm like, yeah. Oh, Mom, that person. Yeah, that person. Like, it's just like, yeah. they're all amazing. And they've gone on to do such cool shit. Like, um, but yeah, I, I, I gravitated to, to like the sketch comedy stuff too. Like I didn't make shit in film school. I was like so insecure and everyone's like so like trying to be cool. And like even myself, like I don't know who I am. So, but I, I was so insecure. I didn't make anything. Well, then, I think the people who are trying to be cool are really masking that insecure. Like I can't let people know. I'm, I, yeah, yeah. But I was that person too, but I didn't even make anything. Cause also art school takes itself so seriously. Like if I tried making Furby and bringing that to class, like I remember watching people, my friend Dom, he went to SVA. He's a skater. He's amazing. He came in with his skateboard first day of school and the teacher scoffed and wrote on the chalkboard, no skate films. And he was like, well, fuck this. Like, what do you mean no skate films? Yeah. Some of the best filmmakers and directors are fucking skaters, bro. Like, what do you mean that? Like, and I really understood There shouldn't that. be fucking rules like that in art school. I'm like, how can you shut that down? It's New York City. This kid probably like, like, like whatever. It was, it was like, yeah. he shut him down. And I feel like I shut down because I really liked, making comedy but like bringing a comedy video to class I didn't really feel like I had honed that skill or anything and so UCB really made me feel like oh I can make stupid shit like I can make a cr and look who's doing like Tim Robinson like yeah he like makes the craziest shit that's where his mind goes and it's people love it they eat it mm -hmm. up but art school's never gonna like be like yeah that's amazing like a hot dog fucking car comes into a somebody drove a hot dog Ooh, car geez. right through that window <laughs> who was it yeah who was it we promised we won't be mad i love that one that's so so yeah funny. it's like yeah somebody got paid making that yeah and that's yeah i want to yeah. do that what was it what's the thing you've been doing with the, the mints i should have brought some i'm gonna bring you guys some flint's mints is my friend's company uh -huh. and my friend Kiji does the art, uh -huh. um, and what happens when you put the mouth, uh, the mint in your mouth, is there's this ingredient called the spilanthi flower, which is like, it's this little yellow like bud, and it, um, it's like Szechuan. It's like, it essentially makes your mouth salivate. It's for cotton mouth. So like we mar ah. they market it to stoners and stuff, but also, so I've shot stuff for them <laughs> at like weeds, weed, yeah. but then they went to like a porno co like convention. Fire. Cause they, cause like all the ads are like, Oh my God, sloppy. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it's yeah. like, now you're going to get ads. Like, it's just like one of those things where like now the ads are going to come up here and be like, Ooh, like what the hell? But they're, they're amazing. Like, and so, yeah, I was shooting all things go fest in Queens. I'll be, doing something this weekend it's like halloween season so i'm gonna do more photos nice. with them but i'll bring you mints they're fun they're there's no packaging no no plastic packaging that's good it's in a tin yeah hell so yeah you can put like altoids but for cool people well they have the sour tangerine flavor that's oh. really similar to um the old sour altoids you remember those yeah, yeah, yeah. those were the shit 
I remember them. Nah. Nah. I never. Yeah, Altoids are just like. I don't remember the sound. The sound Al icebreakers? Altoids are Harvard University that. and icebreakers are like Yukon or something. What's icebreakers? The little balls? No, they're like the little discs. They're like the two colored discs. <laughs> I love American food. <laughs> Is it American the American food. Nah, it's the discs. It's a, disc. <laughs> it's a you know, it's mostly plastic. So let's talk about photography then. So was that another artistic medium? Oh, big word. So that you discovered through UCB. Through UCB. I met my photo mentor, who oh. was an amazing photographer named Chad, and he took me under his wing and completely just was like, "You want to be a photo assistant? Like, can you be reliable and show up on time?" And like he and you get paid way more than like any other job you get to meet someone super cool and you're going to buy me lunch. Like sign me the fuck up. Like this is everything. So he really taught me everything. And yeah, he, he's, he got started by messaging people on MySpace and like was J Cole's photographer. Whoa. And he like has shot like so many amazing people and, um, musicians and rappers and stuff. And I just got to like be on set. I just, it was cool. And like watching someone, direct and like get that um connection with who you're shooting because everyone like hates getting their photo taken i hate it everyone I like it's it. like I, I and i need new headshots and well, I but just... you but see that's the thing like i got to watch him and how he gets you like a person to lower their inhibitions if, yeah. i don't know if that's like how you would say it but like to relax and like so I, that's like why like everyone says it. they hate that everyone hates their photo being taken i hate my photo being taken he has taken so many bad photos of me and you get used to it like because as a photo assistant sometimes you just need someone to sit in with lighting you just like can you just sit there yeah you need a body so i was like happy to just Relax. do that and like watch just and just like see him pics. like think yeah. yeah and like then i got to meet other photographers in the city and work with them um i just worked with my friend scott who is an amazing food photographer and he's not necessarily, like, wanted to seek out food photography, but, like, he has honed this, like, look that's so beautiful and cool. And, like, um, I got to, like, watch how he works and stuff like that. And, like, it really is cool because I went from being a photo assistant to moving up here to being, like, I got to make this shit work. I got to, like, I bought a camera yeah. and was, like, all right. <laughs> I'll still photo assist, but now I am shooting for myself, which is, like, a big step. But oh, yeah. That's nice. Hey. I like photography. I'm not the best at it because I'm so used to doing video that, uh, you That's know. That's funny because I feel like it's like a muscle and like I feel like weaker with video. Well, my whole thing is just like okay, where it changes for me because like those cameras is what I shoot on, right? I see exactly what the image is looking like as it's coming to me with a photo with like my Canon. I'll be like, oh, yeah, I'll set it like this take the photo and I'm like, wait, why is it darker? Let me change this. Wait, why now? Why is it brighter? So I constantly have to be like, cause on the black magic, it says aperture ISO white balance, all as clear as day. Then Maybe I'll switch the back. It's the same thing. I know it's the same thing, <laughs> but then I'll look at my Canon and go, which one's which again? Oh, like, yeah. Cause I, different. the way I have it set up is different and I don't have any like telephoto lenses. I only have this sin whatever variable zoom lenses so trying to like i tried to shoot photos with the 24 to 70 the other day and they came out really crisp problem is the autofocus wasn't working so everything had to be manual but then so the lens is broken? cropped huh the lens is broken no, no, no. it's just like why would the body of the camera was just but the autofocus why would it wouldn't work it would work but it would focus on like not what i wanted it to do Oh, baby, we have to look at your settings. Yes, please. Oh, definitely. Because I'm definitely, I'm actually doing video tomorrow for an event, photo and video. Oh. So I'm trying to like strengthen my video muscle. So I just got like a monitor and, you know, what I got. What video camera do you shoot on? I'm shooting on the Sony AR7 oh. III, oh. which is my photo yeah. setup. I always forget, is it A7R3 or a R7? We're, I don't know, whatever. We're, hey, we're, whatever. Canon, we're Canon guys and Blackmagic. That's I mean, our... I have a Metabones for Canon lenses because Sony lenses are so fucking expensive. They're insane. That I sh They're I fucking shoot Canon insane. lenses. Yeah. Um, it's so nerd. The nerdy talk. Do you ever it. shoot weddings? That's how you make money. I'm going to... Yeah. I yeah. am going to... But I'm, I'm very... <clears throat> Particular? I've been a second at weddings up here. The traditional shit. I never want to shoot those. Like the traditional wedding stuff up here. 
I, I'll be a second, but the pressure's not on me. It's like, I'm just there to shoot the extra stuff. Like, yeah. people who have it down pat, like, it good is, for them. It is, like, way more, like, being a wedding photographer is way more than just shooting the photos. Like, they're directing the whole fucking There's shebang. a list. Yeah. There's a list of shit. And, like, oh, there's a list of photos you have to get. And, like, you're editing and stuff. Like, you know, and what's people are like, do you do weddings? And I'm like, sure. And that that world, you make a lot of money, but you burn out really quick. I feel like it's just like too much. It's just, it gets to the point where it's like, I can't do this. Like it's, and like, what's funny is I had met a girl in Brooklyn who was like a travel wedding photographer. She was making fucking bank. Like she just found this niche of like rich people that were like, we're shooting in Mexico this time. She's like, okay, I'll go to Mexico. And she's like, we're shooting in Iceland. Like, okay, Damn. I'll go to Iceland. But then what happened with COVID? Everything gone. No wedding. <laughs> she was like, I have, I have no job. So like, I mean, everyone didn't have a job, but like her particular, it was like, when will this ever come back? Like, so I'm going to, I'm actually going to, I'm excited about this. I'm going to do a party on high eight millimeter, like old camcorder. Cause like, Oh, I have, one. they want, they yeah. want that look. So I just bought, actually, this is so nerdy of me. I got like targeted for one of those ads for like one of those, like, camcorders for like 80 bucks it's like get the retro 2000s look and it's like and it's the shittiest camera in the fucking world yeah. i was like fuck it i want one and then i bought a high eight millimeter and i bought like a a device to like record Digitize straight it. to it and it's like oh, oh. This, it looks it looks so cool wait it's something to record straight off and now you have a digital already it's like a little input with a screen on it that i'll you need a tape in the camera yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like it's going like through the s tape. it yep. goes through the s port yep you gotta show me what that is, cause I ha I I bought one. Oh yeah, it'll be cool. I'll I have bought to show one. You. I bought a Sony one off my cousin John like a while ago, and I've been shooting with it. Like every time I go do like family event or just go hang. Like, the I tapes bring scare in. me, cause it's unreliable. Like, and you if you reuse tapes, it could glitch sometimes. Oh no, I only I'll buy like, I just use brand new ones just to avoid that. Cause he, you know, he's like a reseller. He hooked it up. Like he was like, oh, I have like all these sealed tapes. I'm only on my I think I'm on my second or third tape so far that I've been shooting, but um. Yeah, that's where I got into filmmaking, obviously, was, like, movies. But also something I always found really interesting was just, like, home videos. I made shit with my friends, like, yeah. as kids. And I feel like you you were like that. Like, you guys wanted to make... We would do make, skits. We yeah. We would for sure On, do on mom's camera. You're like, mom, where's the video camera? Yeah. yeah. I, that, I made fun shit with, like, the girls I grew up with. And we were just pissing our pants, even though it was probably not funny to anyone else. We just thought we were so funny. We thought and, we like, really I shit. feel like I needed... I, art school, like took that away they were like that's not art but like i do want that's like i want to make sh like silly stuff it's that makes people die laughing fun art yeah. is supposed to be fun i was thinking about this the other day yesterday actually we were uh in acting class we were doing this assignment called ghosts in a room and the assignment was like your partner is writing like pretty much a synopsis of somebody that's not in the room and you have to portray that person that's like the assignment no, that wasn't it that wasn't what it. was Did it you read the whole thing? well that's what we ended up happening right what do you mean basically because the whole the idea is that the character is supposed to be someone from your life that you always like that, keep with that, you like fought, yeah like influences your decisions. gotcha okay like that's kind of better well explained classes stress yeah. me out <laughs> It was, this I'm not definitely this. Gonna, I, I'm not stressed out, but I, I'm excited. Anyway, so Spencer explained it better than I did, but um, they write about that person that's always with them, whether alive, dead, whatever, and then you ha they hand that to your you or the partner, and then you have to portray that person by reading it. And then I was like trying to think of something to say because the thing that she, my partner Heather, had wrote about her college professor was just like interesting and i was like damn like i came up with something i was like wait when we're kids we're the, our first thing that we're told to do by like adults is like just go play go go play it's and so important for some reason we are told to stop doing that all of a sudden and be yeah. like no don't do that anymore it's like we but that was play. like from the jump our first assignment the first thing if we were annoying our parents go just go play go play and then when you're doing that later on in life, you're like, why are you doing that? Why are you playing? It's like, that was like the first thing I was told to do. Why would I not do that? But yeah. I remember I was trying to come up with something to say, like in character around that. But then I remembered, don't plan anything. Just go into it. Like, so then I ne and never ended up saying it. But I was thinking about that and I was like, huh. 
I did an acting conservatory on a, right before my freshman year of college, and it was so intense. I, like, lost, like, 15 pounds, and, like, I just, again, deflated my confidence. I definitely burned out, too, before I went to college because this program, like, and also it was just, like, adults being, like, that wasn't good. And I'm, like, okay, well, we're doing a scene about, like, a grown-ass couple, like, who live together in an apartment that, like, are going through this, like, really adult thing, and here I am at 17... And I would, like, ask other people. I'd be like, well, it's, like, really hard for me to do this. To be like, can't you just imagine? And I'm like, I don't have any f- frame of reference. Yeah. Like, I mean, I feel like as a 17-year-old, like, I would play more parts, like, for a 17-year-old. Like, I don't know. Like, so, again, I was like, this isn't fun. I want to play. And I feel like improv is just where – and UCB and sketch was, like, play. Yeah, 100%. And I, But there is still, like – and that's the thing I've learned, like, with this dramatic acting <clears> – <throat> It's still really funny. Like, some of the lines... Like, I, I had to do a scene from Angels in America. And the scene that I'm doing was that, like, my wife, who's, like, fucked up on pills, is calling me out for being gay. And it's just, like, <laughs> kind of funny. True to life. <laughs> and my character's, like, super in the closet. Like, bad. And uh, I'm like, this is supposed to be intense and very serious and dramatic. But then she's like, are you a homo? And I'm like, that's so, <laughs> so funny. funny. <laughs> that is just hilarious. You have to. How find, do you not laugh? When, exactly. Well, that's the thing. Know, you la- you have to laugh at it na- like first. Yeah, yeah. So then it's not funny anymore. Because it, it is serious. Does, he, does someone die in that? In the play? Yeah. Not the my character that I was so playing. The guy Joe, the character I was playing, Joe. He has an affair with a guy who's like in love with somebody else, and the guy that he's in love with has AIDS and is about to die. So. Okay. He pretty much uses my character to like forget that his actual lover is dying. Oh wow! Yeah, that's crazy. But like the scene picks up, like my character just got done like having gay sex, and he goes <laughs> home to his wife, like, "Hey, honey, how are you?" Like, and she's like, "Where were you?" You know, out gay sex. Gay sex. <laughs> like it's just it's funny, but it's like it's, it's supposed yeah. to be very serious. Yeah, it's like it's like it. it I don't know. Oh. All, dramatic acting also you have to watch this David Chase documentary about the Sopranos the creator of the Sopranos because James Gandolfini he like it's like taking the work home with you and I feel like they were making us do such intense shit that I was like taking it home with me as a 17 year old and I was just like this is very intense for me so like and it's like a, it's obviously as a job like if you can separate it like there are people who can but James Gandolfini getting into character for Tony Soprano, obviously a fucking monster. He would put like a rock in his shoe. He's like, "You want to get fucking angry? Put a rock in your shoe." You want to get fucking angry? You want to get fuck- put a fucking rock in your shoe? <laughs> yeah, with the guy list. walking around Disney World with a fucking rock in, in your the, shoe. Yeah. You go to Epcot. You wait in line to go on a fucking golf ball, and there's a rock in your shoe. There you go. That was pretty good. Um. Where was? I? Oh, he's like he wouldn't. He's like don't. I don't sleep. That's like the the easiest way to get angry force yourself not to sleep for so, me it's not eat really mean no sleep and no eat i can get really if i don't bitchy. eat i'm like the i'm like a fucking animal i'm like shut the fuck up no weed i'm like the biggest bitch yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway yeah so um he keeps you know he would take the character home with him and like it's really funny there's a, there's a scene he david chase says it at james gandolfini's eulogy he's on you know, the platform at the church. And he's like, we were filming a scene, I remember. And the script said, Tony goes over to the fridge and angrily shuts it and then goes and sits at the desk. And James Gandolfini does it and he breaks the fucking door off their fridge. And it just like set the rhythm off that they yelled cut. And James, <laughs> you're going to do the impression, but he's like, the place I got to go place i gotta go for this what the places i gotta go for this role like yeah. the pla- i gotta fucking do this over again should have just kept it rolling james gandolfini like breaks this door of this fridge and they yell cut and james is like lamenting about how the fact that like this role has really taken such a fucking toll on him and david chase just goes did i say break the fridge does the script say break the fridge it doesn't say that it says tony goes over and angry angrily closes the fridge so that's like the thing is like i feel like it's so hard to, like, do really. Like, I watched Hereditary recently and, like, Tony Collette. Like, she's so good. She's like, you work and go. You clean up as you go. And it's like, bitch, how did you fucking do that shit? That was so intense. Like, I could never. Could never. I, 
So sorry to cut no, you off. No, no, I, no, don't apologize. You're the guest. I shouldn't be talking as much. Um, I can't, I can't sit here and say I don't know. Like if I could or could not, but I'm just kind of in the. It's commitment. Like, like yeah. can you get? Like I'm, I'm sure you're capable, but it's like, can I, I as personally, no, I can't commit. But I, that. I think though, there's like. A similarity with like the really absurd like comedy. If you can commit to that, oh, yeah. like you can commit to the serious stuff because it's still just playing. But now instead of relying as the joke to get you to that like point of ease, it's just like this is these are the points that I have to hit like emotionally, like whatever it takes for you to prepare to get to be funny and silly and creative and have sex with a Furby. Or, That's so easy. Exactly. <laughs> It's but there's still like st- some sort of preparation. Like, yeah, I gotta go. Do- but some I'm, I'm very, people can't do that. Yeah, I'm very comfortable looking like an idiot. So am I. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I know. Look at my hat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. um, what do you mean? Well, I, I, you know, I never know how I look, and then when I catch glimpses of myself in the mirror, I'm like, I was looking like that this whole time. Oh Fuck. yeah, I'm really glad I like this mirror. Yeah, isn't that cool? You could just see. It's almost like another camera. You look great. Thank you. You look great. Stoic. I look great. <laughs> I think you can do it, Brooke. I, 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 you are, you already are working in so many different mediums. I mean, you also won a lawsuit against a major corporation. So I don't think being a dramatic seeds. actor. You're planting some seeds. You're planting some seeds. We'll see where um, they go. How do you, how do you balance working in the different, stuff do you balance it well do you not you just kind of just go for it well i i don't have a love life and that like is a big part of like i'm very hyper independent right now and that's because i really suck at dating and like Mm -hmm. i was scarred from i was in a relationship like through the pandemic living in the city and then when i moved up here we broke up and um yeah it's just one dating women is hard dating anyone's hard like it doesn't have to be gay straight whatever like people suck (laughs) and but I had two back to back like kind of crazy experiences like and as a sober person like I got someone I have no problem like meeting up with someone at a bar when they're like half in the bag already and like they're like let's go to another bar I'm like eh, I'm good and so yeah. you know I've been for the first time in my life I was always I'm alone and I'm I was always scared to be alone but like now I'm not and like doing it and you know you kind of have to be good on your own because even when someone comes along like that they're not gonna magically fix you so yeah. you there's still even though you're with somebody there still are a, there's a lot of time where you still are with yourself only yeah and i gave up a lot of my independent time when i was in relationships and i'm trying to learn how to be like no this is like what i need and like i need my time and stuff like that and so i have no problem like just taking my time but i'm getting out there you know Gigi, what's Gigi doing later? what's Gigi doing later she's probably gonna watch baseball mets no, Philly. She's a Yankees fan. I think the Yankees f- got a chance this year. They do. They. Mets? I mean, they they got a f- buy out of the first round. The yeah. Mets are still in the playoffs. Yeah. They At play the time Phillies. of recording, it's October. What's the October fourth? They they came back last night against yeah. the Brewers. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Who was that? Pete Alonso hit a. Paula mark. Pete. Do you know what balling what cost is? Lacoste. Balling, at what cost? Oh no. It's a built-in game show within the podcast, so it's very easy. All you have to do, I'm going to list three items. And all you have to do is guess the price of these three items and order them from least expensive to most expensive. Do you think you can do that? I think so. Okay. All right. So normally we try to pick things like I switched it up. I've been picking things off of Facebook Marketplace instead. So that means the price could be very different as opposed to like Amazon. Because like could be used. if it's like, oh, like Uggs. You know they're probably going to be around the same price range, but if on Facebook Marketplace there is such a ridiculous price fluctuation. So here are the three items. I'll show you what they look like since we don't have a big monitor up there to see. These all came from Facebook Marketplace. All right. So our first item is this Furby. Furby. A I smoke I chill weed beanie. I need that. And my personal favorite, <laughs> hot dog skateboard. I could try flip that. Just a random skateboard with a hot dog on it. So, Brooke, 
guess the price from least expensive to most expensive. You don't have to say the number per se. You just say what you think is the least expensive item. I don't think that's guess the price. No. I was gonna say 69, 420 for everything. Dollar sign. Uh, least expensive, Furby, Furby, what was the second one? The weed hat. Weed hat, hot dog, skateboard, okay. Was it a fingerboard or a big skateboard? Real, real skateboard. Okay. Not a fingerboard. I wouldn't trick Trick question. It. Okay. I'm going to say beanie, Furby, then skateboard. Beanie, and then the Furby, and then the skateboard. Is that your least to most? Least so to most. beanie is the least expensive, and then Furby is the second. Yeah. And then the most expensive would be the skateboard. Are you locking that in? I'm locking it in. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. So close, so close. So the beanie, the beanie Fuck was twelve dollars. That's the expensive. The skateboard was twenty dollars. The Furby was thirty-five dollars listed on Facebook. Why? Because it's vintage. I don't know. Those things, the old ones, were really scary. They are fucking terrifying. The There's one in this house somewhere. I know I had one when I was a kid in this house. Well, the new one. Okay, so why the Furby? My roommate went to '90s Fest. He was a sound engineer in yeah. Brooklyn, and him and his friends went and Furby sponsored it. So they literally were handing out the new version of the Furbies and their Bluetooth. Yeah. So like we, they would get drunk and like he would bring out the Furby and it like says like if you put two together, they'll start talking to each other, the new ones. So I like was skating one day in Brooklyn and, and like it came to the stupid idea. The sketch came to me. So I bought another Furby and like we would make them talk. I like once taped knives to them. Oh my god, <laughs> sociopath! <laughs> and that's how you ended up with what is it? Blue Just, is the warmest. Blue is the warmest Furby. Blue but yeah, warmest and I Furby. ended up with a Furby, and I'm like, okay. why is that funny? Are you familiar with a movie by a different title? It's heartbreaking. Yeah. It's actually like they've come out to be like that. What's the worst movie ever we've ever worked? That's well, not a French the accent. Color. It's a okay. Not Would I be accent. lying saying here I didn't see that scene from that movie? Yes, I have. A little. Way too, like, even for a French film, I'm like, that is God too damn, God much. God damn! That is too much, man. Like, I put my phone down and I go, you know what? That is too much. That is too much. That's, that is too much. As a straight man. I don't like man, that. As a straight man, this is this too much lesbian sex. Hot sex. But yeah, like, um, Furby, Furby, I want, I just mess, people like Bernie, my old roommate, who had the Furby and he, recorded me in his room singing i will it's really weird never. seeing you with brown hair i know i don't i hate it i like love is that your natural hair color or are you a blonde naturally no nah, bitch i pay for these highlights i wish i i wish it's i would save money you i want to put highlights on it let's get you virgin in some hair um yeah i want to do another furby sketch all right i want to just up it just get weirder as we close this out brooke What's next? What is next for Brooke? I, well, I really do want to keep pursuing Titty Monster stuff um, and hopefully come out with some stuff, raise some money this October for the beanies. You know, um, I want to make cool shit really soon. Like, that's, that's honestly what I have for 2025. Like, get back in the groove, you know, with, I feel like I finally have roots in this area and yeah. like it took me a second to like really get grounded and like, you know, get steady work and stuff and really like, I, I love it up here and I'm not leaving and yeah, like finally, like I have homies up here that are like weird like me that like, I want to make shit. I want to uh -huh. make shit and then, you know, yeah, just keep, keep making, keep making stuff with the homies. Well, Brooke. There's only one last thing left. Every guest on this show has the opportunity to walk away with something cool, maybe, or 20 bucks. We have a mystery box here. And in this mystery box could be yours, something. Or you can have $20. Okay, I went full Karen Cucumber at the dispensary today, and I really feel stupid about it. And mm. I was so flustered, and I overpaid for my weed by $20. But I called and it's fine. They're, it's all handled. Okay. So I, that's so funny that you're like 20 bucks or. or but there, I want to I mean, do the mystery box. Bucks no, I there. want. I think. I, no, the mystery box. There could always. be nothing. Fuck money. I want the prize. You're going bitch. mystery box. Hell yeah. I, you had me. You were like, wait, don't say that. No, no. I, I ain't no fool. 
we, we did. Ever. Nobody ever takes it. What? Why? No, nobody ever takes the money. Oh. Don't take the money. What is it? Who knows? I, you know, I was obsessed with Legos as a child. There you go. It's a Lego three-in-one kit. It could be a unicorn, a peacock, or a fish. I don't know. I'm going to cry. Yeah. I did not pick that because you're a lesbian, but it kind of did work out that it was rainbow. You picked it because I'm a unicorn. Yeah, that too. I was trying to... F- or a seahorse. A seahorse. Or That's a what it is. <laughs> it looked like a fish of some kind. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. ASMR. Thank you for coming on the show, Brooke. Thank Pleasure. You, Thank you for the hat. Thank you for this pin. Guys, go support Brooke. Go buy some cool stuff. Go buy, go buy some titties. That's a glow-in-the-dark pin. Yeah. It is glow-in-the-dark? I need to make new merch because, like, the old merch is so out. Like, I need some new merch. And I had, like, my yeah. Japanese friend, Ryuta, draw me some. He wrote Titty Monster in kanji. Oh. It's Chichi Kaiju. Nice. And what my dog's name is Cheech, so I call him Chichi. So Chichi Kaiju, Chichi Kaiju, Monster Kaiju. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kaiju. Chichi's titties. Chichi's titties. And Gigi is downstairs watching TV. Let's go fucking hang with Gigi. Yo. All right. Well, Brooke, thank you for coming on the show. Thank Always you for having me. Oh my god. And uh, if you like what you listen to, ladies and gentlemen, like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Follow Brooke at. Uh, you can follow Titty Monster Inc. on the gram. That's all I do. And then tittymonsterinc.com if you want to buy anything, support with the pink beanies. And then my photo stuff is on Bork Shoots. And then my website's just my name, brookcomedies.com. Comedies, comedies. So you remember. Boom. Boom. Pop. Sound of my heart. <laughs> the beat goes on and on. All right. Thank you, Spence. And thank you, the guests. And just remember, I forgot. <laughs> Cut. Dumb.